The Vietnam War of 1964 till 1973 was, in reality, an insane and senseless massacre that led to the death of just American soldiers in the amount of at least 60,000 people, not counting the wounded, maimed, disabled, and simply those who went crazy. More than that, even the Americans recognized that Vietnam was fighting fiercely, steadfastly, and doing everything to inflict maximum damage on the troops of the opposite side. As for the attitude towards POWs, here the Viet Cong, an opponent of the United States who advocated the creation of a communist Vietnam, acted sternly within the framework of the Geneva Convention on the Treatment of Prisoners of War, that is, in literally no way. The fact is that the United States did not officially declare war on Vietnam, and since there was no official war going on, then the Vietnamese did not stand on ceremony with the prisoners. Many of them survived a real hell in captivity, and many were tortured and brutally executed. And this is what we are going to talk about today. The topic of this episode is the most horrendous tortures of the Vietnam War. Secret Chronicles here. Let's continue this episode. For the sake of justice, it must be also said that in relation to their opponents, the Vietnamese who supported the United States, in any case the Viet Cong acted no less cruelly. But accordingly, the Vietnamese who opposed the Viet Cong also allowed themselves, at the very least, not the most civilized methods. The most famous execution. As fate would have it, the most famous execution was the execution of General of Viet Cong, which was committed right in front of the camera of the American correspondent by General Nguyen Ngoc Loan, and who was nicknamed the Vietnam Hawk. It happened on January 30, 1968, when in Saigon, American correspondent Eddie Adams noticed that two Vietnamese soldiers were leading a bound men to their commander, who was General Nguyen Ngoc Loan. Thinking that the interrogation would begin now, the correspondent quickly pointed the camera but the general quickly took out a pistol and shot the prisoner in the head. Here's the thing. The prisoner was the captured Viet Cong general Nguyen Van Lim. It so happened that it was this photo that became the most famous for the entire war. It also led to the increase of anti-war sentiment in the United States itself. The curiosity of the photo is that the execution was committed not by the opponent, but by the supporter of the United States, which also caused public outrage. Although, in fact, it was in its essence, just a single case out of many which happened during the conflict. And if the public found out why Nguyen Ngoc Loan decided to publicly execute the captured general, then possibly its mood would have changed a lot, in the opposite direction. Viet Cong Atrocities Against Civilians During the battles in Saigon in those days, there was more than enough evidence of the Viet Cong's incredible atrocities against civilians. For example, the executed General Nguyen Van Lim was taken prisoner next to a mountain of charred bodies of women and children. So we can assume that it is not surprising that he was shot without trial. There is plentiful documentary evidence that in the region supported by the United States, the Communist Army of Vietnam dealt with civilians without any pity. Women, old people and children were burned alive, shot throughout the entire villages and drowned in swamps. Many were abused to death by inhuman torture. When the Viet Cong had enough time, they chopped off the heads of children in front of their parents, cut off limbs, and generally committed such madness, close to what happened in the territories occupied by the Nazis during the Second World War. According to the memoirs of American soldiers and officers, they often stumbled upon completely disfigured bodies in small villages, and so disfigured that sometimes it was impossible to determine not only the age of the tortured, but even his or her gender. As it happens, the Viet Cong used a kind of analog of carpet bombing, which was carried out by American aviation. The purpose of the bombing was to completely clear the area of a possible enemy. The purpose of the Viet Cong's punitive operations was to completely clear the territory of those who supported the United States and opposed the communist Vietnam. Torment and Executions of POWs Officially, it is believed that 55 U.S. prisoners of war died or were executed in captivity, but according to other sources, 113. The main part of the prisoners are downed pilots, since it was almost impossible to capture the fighters who fought on land, since almost any action or mission happened in groups. But there were exceptions here. Let us tell you about them. You also need to understand that official statistics do not indicate the number of captured U.S. allies. For one example, Australian troops, who also fought, died and were captured. As already mentioned, 
there was no official declaration of war, so the Vietnamese did not stand in ceremony with the prisoners at all. And the torture that the prisoners experienced was inherently similar to an incredibly slow and painful execution. At the same time, the Viet Cong did not have professional torture specialists, so they appreciated and cherished those who were able to do this. On top of that, the main skill that was required of such a specialist was not to torture the prisoner to death, but to inflict insane level of pain. A Vietnamese executioner nicknamed Protoput is known, who was able to bend the prisoner with the help of metal rods, rods and wire in such a way that the unfortunate man was practically tied in a knot, experiencing inhumane torment. At the same time, neither bones nor joints were practically damaged, William Lauren, who miraculously survived captivity and the same torture with rods after his release, said this. He knew the limits to which you could arch your arms and legs without breaking them, and in this, there was something unreal about it all. He came without expressing any emotion. Torture was his job. He was a professional torture expert. The main task of torture was to break the spirit of the prisoner, and if they died, it was believed that the prisoner was either weak or to blame. One of the most popular tortures and executions at the same time was water. Several people were driven into a pit filled with water, but not to choke, the prisoners had to stand on tiptoe. The one who could not withstand the tensity simply choked on water. Shackling and sleep deprivation for several days were also common, with prisoners having their wrists cut to the bone with knives, often resulting in blood poisoning and agonizing death. The wounded, instead of providing assistance in contrast, were deliberately injured with additional wounds in order to cause even greater torment and, again, blood poisoning. Often, instead of shekels, an ordinary rope was used. The prisoner's hands were tied behind his back and lifted up, fixing the rope for several hours. In the end, the unfortunate person at best received paralysis of the limbs and loss of sensation. There is a known case when two prisoners escaped after they were caught again, the unfortunates were tormented so that the screams echoed throughout the entire camp. The first fugitive, Captain Edwin Ederberry, died of torture eight days later, and the second, name is unknown, died 38 days later. The Viet Cong loved to use electric shock torture, and especially bamboo chips. Chips were driven under the nails, every day moving them further and further. Chips could be driven into the skin, ears, or nostrils and then simply set on fire. In addition to this, it must be said that the conditions in the barracks or pits where the prisoners were held were also inherently slow executions. Huge scary insects and rats crawled on the ground, thousands of mosquitoes flew, which only worsened the torment of prisoners of war. Also, the Viet Cong very often used the so-called shirt torture. The prisoner was dressed in a long-sleeved shirt that was tied in knots at the wrists to prevent bleeding. Then, the executioners carved the whole pieces of meat in their hands. Again, in addition to the fact that it caused inhuman pain, the very conditions of detention of prisoners led to the fact that soon an infection was introduced into the injuries, and then the prisoner was waiting for a painful death, either from gangrene or from blood poisoning. Actually, those who went through the Vietnamese captivity, without any doubt, went through what could be worse than hell. In addition to these tortures, the Viet Cong often used many days of almost incessant torture to, for example, extract a confession or even prepare for a meeting with the correspondent. There is a case when a captured US pilot was specially prepared for an interview with the Japanese correspondent. The preparation consisted of six days of continuous torture so that the prisoner understood what would await him if he suddenly gave answers that they would not like. The most ghastly execution. Contrary to expectations, the Viet Cong never used the shooting of prisoners of war. In any case, none of the survivors mentioned such things. In addition to these methods of killing, some prisoners were actually executed for a variety of reasons. Someone weakened so much that it became pretty clear that he would not live long. Someone was allegedly sentenced to death. But contrary to expectation, even the death penalty was not considered a deliverance from monstrous torment. In fact, the execution of a prisoner of war was the last but the most terrible torment. You see, in actual truth, the execution of the condemned was to be by another prisoner of war, who was chosen randomly. Next, the executioner was given a slightly pointed bamboo stick, and the prisoner had to cut the throat of his own comrade with this stick. And it is to cut, and nothing else. And it is exactly the throat. 
It is difficult to imagine what the executioner was going through. It is even less possible to imagine what the condemned person felt. In fact, the execution lasted until the throat was finally cut with this blunt stick. According to eyewitnesses, the sentence could be carried out for up to six hours. This sort of execution was probably not known throughout at least the whole 20th century. When the Viet Cong finally decided to execute a prisoner, they tied him tightly to a tree and forced another prisoner to cut his neck with sharpened bamboo. This procedure was one of the worst tortures a person could be subjected to, as the execution, as we said earlier, lasted up to six hours. Thank you for watching this episode. Leave a like and subscribe to this channel, and we see you next time on Secret Chronicles.